Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Merriman here in my home in Charlotte, North Carolina. Joining me today is John Bobo, the Vice President of Racing Operations. John, let's jump right into it. NASCAR, we're back this weekend. Now, we're different than stick and ball sports. And, and how does that basically allow us to get back to racing so soon? You know, I think there are uh, several things that make it easier for NASCAR to return first. You know, as a league, when we open up, we're not opening up in 32 cities. We take the league to specific uh, communities and locations, and we can strategically pick those and then move them if, if necessary. Uh, the other thing is our competitors have a lot of PPE to begin with. You know, they're wearing fire suits. Uh, they're wearing uh, you know, fireproof everything when they're over the wall and, and our drivers. And the other advantage is, our infields. We have this ability to space out our operations dramatically uh, so we can uh, have people in a lot of different places. We can create bubbles for the drivers. So, you know, the drivers are going to come to the event. They're going to be in a motor coach uh, in a bubble until we put them in a race car and they can go. So we've, we've got a lot of advantages in social distance. And then we also have an advantage in compartmentalization and creating functional cells uh, for people to operate at track. So, I think those are some of the things that have really helped us return to racing. And you guys have worked from, you know, local, state, and federal officials, the CDC, OSHA's been involved. What are some guidelines that they helped you guys put in place to make sure our return is, in fact, safe? Uh, that, that, great question. I think one of the first things we did is we started working with a, a variety of physicians, uh, including an infectious disease uh, physician and epidemiologist. They helped us really think about how to take what were the CDC guidelines and how to apply those to racing. We worked with a lot of other doctors that we, that we see every week at track who really understand racing and, and emergency medicine and how to apply those as well. So, you know, just even the basic things, it was just more of a, about awareness, such as, uh, you know, are the spotters all gonna be on the roof crowded together? No, the spotters are not. The spotters are gonna be spread out across the top rows of the stadium where they have the advantage to see and do their jobs, which is an important safety function and important competition function. Uh, and, and things like that. So it's been a nice collaboration and it's been, um, you always want to dialogue to hear anyone's concerns and be able to assure them that you're addressing them. And maybe they've thought of things you haven't thought of. Now, what are some specific protocols you can, you know, give us, you gave us a spotter example, but do you have any other specific protocols that'll be in place and, and how can NASCAR enforce that on grounds? Well, you know, the first thing is uh, we're requiring only essential personnel, people that make the car go or maybe people that are involved in the broadcast. Uh, we are going to have people that have historically always been in the infield and have always attended race, uh, races that are not. They're going to have to be somewhere else. Uh, we're going to screen people. Uh, uh, there'll be an initial screen where we take temperature and answer questionnaires. If there's any question, we go into a secondary screen with medical personnel, with a, a medical doctor making the final determination whether someone is safe to enter the infield. We'll have thermal cameras set up in the infield too, where we'll be randomly taking people's temperatures and making sure they're compliant. We'll have uh, outside the infield care center, we'll have operations also screening for uh, any pandemic related issues because we want to protect the integrity of the infield care center for emergency operations during the race. Everybody's going to wear a cloth mask. Uh, at any time at, at the race. We know this is a privilege, uh, and so we, we, we greet this responsibility with everything that it entails, and I can tell you everyone at NASCAR has worked so hard uh, to make this happen, as well as everybody else in the industry. Now, a large part of this, building off of that, a large part of this is, is going to fall on the teams in the weeks and days, you know, before we get to a racetrack. What have they been instructed to do uh, so when they get on property at a racetrack, they're good to go. They're ready to hit the ground running. You know, we've shared our protocols at length with the teams and the drivers and the owners, uh, helping them understand what's required. We're asking teams to make sure that the participants they bring have been symptom free for five days and that they've not been exposed to anybody else. Uh, we've asked them to travel responsibly. Um, we meaning, you know, if they can drive instead of fly, that's great. And, and, you know, frankly, that's why we picked Darlington, is we knew this was an event that the majority of the industry could drive to for one day and then drive home that night. There's never been an event like this before. We're going to travel differently. We're going to enter in staggered times. We're going to exit in staggered times. We're going to move about the racetrack differently. Uh, it'll be nothing like uh, we've ever seen. But from home, from the broadcast, it's going to be great. It's going to be racing that we've known uh, and that we've been longing for for several months. 
All right, we appreciate your time and uh, good luck keeping everything running smoothly this weekend. Yeah, thank you so much.